broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight. O'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rockets heard them, the bombs bursting in. The following broadcast is an official production of the Faulkner Sports Network. Okay. All right. He's alone, eh? There we go. Yeah, Backwards what goal. A goal. Nice. Kicks it out, gets demoed right there, but Whoa. still makes the shot. Oh. I'm aboard the lane train. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> the lane train. The lane train. Ooh. Virginia going hard for the goal. Ooh. Excellent save. Watch this. Here Perfect he goes. Maneuver. He just, just kind of flips over and then gets the demo and knocks in the goal. Oh, just <laughs> Lane with the demo. Him. Lane actually makes the shot here. And then Cameron is just like running interference, takes him out, and then just sort of escorts the ball into the goal. Like, all right, so Faulkner off to a hot start here against the Simpson Storm. Wow. Very pretty goal right there. Oh, beautiful. And Cameron going straight Go it, for Cameron. the goal. Sploosh! We have a Brazil here, folks. That's it. There it is. Faulkner is the champion of this region. Wow. Excellent. Being here with us on the stream, we've got a big Rocket League game coming up here in just a second, and that's going to be against the University of Missouri Science and Technology, so it'll be Eagles versus Miners in tonight's matchup. Thanks so much for being with us here this evening. I'm head coach Caleb Colquitt. I'm Seth Dawson. And we're going to be bringing you all of the action for this upcoming event. So let's go ahead and take a look inside Regitar USA High Res Arena and see our players you've got corn pop over there in the middle who uh is having a good old time i don't know what's going on there maybe they uh had something funny happen in the warm-ups but we've got that we've got ian over there to the side who uh, is just kind of in the corner of the screen there that's also um uh, he actually goes by a different moniker now. He was Zinc. I think it's Zincaroo now, so he's like had a separate account, but that's him. And then over on the other side, we've got Old Dish. Brandon is there, and uh, he goes by Super Dish, so we'll be seeing some good stuff from him tonight, the captain of the team. And then over there in the right, we've got uh, KVN Play 93, mm -hmm. otherwise known as Kayla Carmona. Uh, one of the hardest working members of the esports team. She actually just came here from soccer practice because for those of you who don't know, she's also the goalie of our ladies soccer team. So she puts in an awful lot of work on both sports and a dual athlete and uh, always somebody that I thought was pretty impressive. Now, Brandon, he's just on the esports team, but he's on like every team in the <laughs> esports team. So like he's if you if you want to count them as separate ones, he would actually be like a. Uh, a triple athlete, I guess you would say. <laughs> yeah, I don't think there's anyone else on as many teams as he is. Uh, the I think there's one team he's not on, and that's it. Hey, the only team he's not on is the League of Legends team. Well, he's also not on Overwatch. Oh, he has yeah, played with Overwatch, but he, he threatens all the time that he's just going to join the Overwatch team. Uh, I was like, Brandon, you can't play four sports. It's just too much. But anyway, so uh, they're ready to go, and I know that they're going to be getting into the game here in just a second. Before we do get to that, though, I want to talk to you about our fantastic sponsor, which is, of course, Shane's Rib Shack, which we love. It's only two miles from Faulkner's campus, so if you go west on Atlanta Highway, you're going to see Shane's Rib Shack right there next to, like, the UPS store and all those other places. And uh, as far as barbecue goes, one of the best places in town for sure. Uh, it's right across from the Publix next to that map 
Mapco, although I think they're changing that Mapco into something else. So I may need to update my, my live read there. But either way, it's right there. Perfect lunch spot for if you're just getting together with coworkers or want to get away uh, with some of your friends for a lunch break. It's really, really good for that. It's convenient. And because barbecue, usually the stuff's already made. So you just swing by there for lunch. They bring it right out to you. It only takes a couple minutes and uh, really good, really good prices. And it's also good not just for those like convenient little lunch spaces, but they also cater for larger gatherings. So let's say you got people coming over for a, a large football game uh, like last night and uh, you need a whole bunch of food. Well, Shane's Rib Shack has you covered. Maybe you're just not so good at the cooking thing. Well, you don't have to be with Shane's Rib Shack. They can get you ribs. They can get you barbecue. They have all of their sides and they have them in catering portions. So you can feed a whole bunch of people for the right price and it doesn't inconvenience you at all. So be sure to check out Shane's Rib Shack. They have everything for everybody uh, you could want with some fantastic barbecue and friendly service on top of that as well. So plenty of catering options. Take all the stress off yourself and just enjoy whatever event you've got coming up and be sure to check out their app as well. So download the Shames Rib Shack app today and you get a free barbecue sandwich for doing that. All right, so it looks like the game is getting close to being underway. They've got their lobby set up and should be more or less good to go. So we'll be bringing that up in here in just a second. And it looks like they've got, uh, yeah, the other the other team has checked in. So I'm kind of looking off to the side there. I can see through the, the glass walls here in Regitar. Uh, the other team is checked in and they're set up. So we should be underway here in just a minute. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing this. I'm, I know that these guys have worked really hard. They played really well in their last game. And I'd really yeah. like to see us have a have a strong showing here. So uh, while we're waiting on them to go ahead and get that done, do want to mention that we have several big broadcasts coming up soon. Uh, first of all, Overwatch 2 coming off of their big win against Iowa last week. They will be playing tomorrow, and it's going to be at an unusual time. So it's not going to be at 6 o'clock like it normally is. We actually had to reschedule things. It worked better for the other school. It worked better for us. So we decided to start the game at 8.30 p.m. So that will be coming up, and we're, we've got an SEC matchup. So it'll be us against the University of South Carolina, so it'll be Eagles versus Gamecocks tomorrow night. Uh, and then, of course, we have another Rocket League game just to make you aware of the scheduling and what's going on. Our next Rocket League game is actually not going to happen for another two weeks because they have a bye week next week. So the next game that they have is going to be on October the 26th. That's also going to be at 6 p.m. And it's going to be against Kirkwood University, so it's going to be Eagles versus Eagles. And so whatever the outcome of this game tonight, we're going to have another game for tomorrow as well. So hopefully we're able to uh, go into that one after a win tonight. We're hoping, of course, that is. Oh, and it looks like we're into the game. Right. So let's go ahead and check that out. It looks like we are already on. Uh, <laughs> we currently have the blue versus white team set up uh, for the scoreboard. So. Yeah, um, do want to make a note of that, by the way. Uh, that was really my fault. So Faulkner, of course, is blue. Uh, okay. And the other team is marked as white, even though they're green. That is Missouri. I just made a mistake, uh -huh. and somehow it, it escaped my notice that we had not made that scoreboard yet. So that's actually my yeah. fault. Yeah. So I apologize to the audience for that, but uh, that is what's going on here. Um, I would love to be able to remedy that, but I can't do it live in broadcasts. <laughs> we'll, well, right just have to, we'll just have to live through the blue and white. <laughs> well, luckily right now it looks like uh, Faulkner is currently on the offensive. Uh, had a really strong defense showing there at the very beginning, uh, getting it back to the opponent's side. Uh, and now green team or uh, Missouri, right? Yeah. yeah. Missouri's trying to just keep it in that corner away from their goal. You know what? I didn't know that they were going to do this and have the actual team colors on there, so it may just actually be smarter to take the uh, the scoreboard off completely. Uh -huh. Oh, man, heck of a, uh, a score there by Hot Dog. Uh, Hot Dog for the Missouri side, of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that uh, really was kind of fast and almost felt like out of nowhere. We were holding it on their side for such a long time, and then they were able to just get it uh, really solid hit to our side and then just a really uh clean goal before anyone else was able to get there and mount a defense so yeah super dish with a really good save there yeah not not wanting to repeat that and trying to mimic it on their side here in a second right so super dish now going on the offense so he's uh had a really good couple of seconds of play Ooh. getting that save and then immediately going over there to try to get a goal 
which uh, super dish there saving it again corn pop barely missing uh stealing it from the opposing team as they were bringing it over oh corn pop with the save nice able to kick it out and not only kick it out but kick it out strategically toward his teammate so that worked out really well for us Ooh. And it looks like we've got a little bit of a clear match here. The question is, can some of the Faulkner players get there? Nope. Uh, they're going wow. to have possession taken from them. Corn Pop heads him off to make sure he's not able to set up that shot the way he wants to. Oh, and this could be trouble. But it looks like the ball is going to take a Faulkner bounce favorable away from the goal as Ooh. opposed to in front of it. I'm not sure who that was, but uh, just had a demolition. Oh, no. Flurn uh, able to come in just straight down the middle, uh, getting there just in time for that setup his teammate put down. Super Dash trying to save it, but not able to get it out of the way, unfortunately. Yeah, Super Dish was in the right position to block that pass, the initial pass, but he was not in a good position to block the follow-up. And that's the reason that teamwork is so imperative here is that he just was not able to keep it from the second touch. Flurn seems to be on... Uh... Uh, Flaren seems to be on the, their demo, <laughs> seems to be their demo person. I believe he's gotten two or three demos already. It does appear that way, yeah. Blue team trying to get the ball across, just uh, see if we can set up something. Yeah, and Corn Pop trying to fight kind of on his own there for control. The other teammates waiting back, trying to make sure that they have boost to go on the attack here. When you're down two goals like that, you, you do have to be conscious of that. Oh, and Flurn with it. You know, a lot of these goals have been very quick goals. Not a lot of setup, not a lot of read on them, just the ball's there and a team member. And I think that that speaks to Missouri's ability to do ball mm -hmm. control. Yeah, that, they're not really doing any of the super fancy dri air dribbling and stuff that we're used to seeing uh, from a lot of different players. Uh, and, and even from our team on, on several occasions. They're just uh, very strong basics. Uh, yeah, so so you kind of saw an example of it here. Watch. Super Dish gets the block. Another one comes in. And then by the time they do that, Faulkner's overcommitted and nobody's watching mm -hmm. the goal. So looking to look really, uh, really interesting match. Look to see how... Faulkner is going to adjust their game plan from here just to see what we can continue to do this match. Can we bring this back? Or if not, what are we going to plan and change up for the Whoa. Next round? And Florin seems to be scoring almost yeah. all of the goals. Uh, yeah, it was. I think the first two were by uh, the hot dog. Yeah, um, I, but, I know the first one was, and I think the second one was as well. But, but since then, it's been, been, uh, been all Florin. Corn Pop able to get first touch. And Zinkaroo, good job of keeping the ball out of their side of the field there. Super Dish going to push forward. Hot Dog gets credit for the save. Oh, and very close. Pops into the corner of the goal, but unfortunately bounces back out. Faulkner just kind of looking for any kind of a score here to help boost the morale. Uh, right, I've seen five to nothing comebacks with a minute left, yeah. but they are rare. True. It's a challenge to, to come back from a deficit of that much. Well, an actual comeback in and of itself may be unlikely at this point. Even getting one goal here to make it a, a final score of one to one to five instead of zero to five would be a ton. To, yeah, if nothing else, just more momentum going into the next match. Yeah, it's it's one of those things of uh, well, <laughs> as I say, if you can, it's one of those ideas of, like if you can make them bleed, it makes you feel a little better. For sure. By the way, as Thanos put it. Yeah. Right.
Yeah, unfortunately, the Eagles just never really able to capitalize on some of the opportunities. But, you know, to the credit of the Missouri team, they didn't give them very many opportunities. Yeah. Really, and so that did make a difference. Really strong fundamentals coming from the Missouri team there. Mm -hmm. uh, just really good base ball control. Nothing fancy. Just straight to the point. Uh, and being there when they needed to be. So really looking forward to seeing how Faulkner is going to adjust to this. Uh, we definitely, it, it doesn't seem like it's, while the final score was 0-5, to five, it didn't feel like there was a an impossible, it didn't no, feel and, impossible. And that's the thing too, this is obviously a skilled team, but it's a team that is skilled on the ground, which is funny because one of our biggest places of weakness has been that we are not proficient in the air as a lot of our mm -hmm. opponents, but that's not the case seemingly in this game. So if Faulkner can capitalize on that. All right, Hot Dog going for it here and able mm -hmm. to sink it in. I will say Missouri feeling like they've always got the ball head right towards the goal. Faulkner just not quite able to keep it out of the line of fire, it feels like. Well, you saw Corn Pop's problem there was he was ahead of the ball mm -hmm. because he was actually in a not a great position to defend, uh, defend. It's better to be on back post. But he was in not a terrible position to defend, but the reason he missed it is because he got a little antsy and jumped for it before he should have. Mm -hmm. If he had stayed back a little longer, I mean, I don't know if he would have been able to defend it or not, but he would have had a better chance. All right, Zink coming Whoa. in for the save, not quite able to make it in time. Yeah, if he had been like maybe a half second earlier, he would have been able to get it too. Now, this actually is a fairly fancy air shot, uh, and Zink is able to at least kick it to the corner, but his angle was a little off, and he was just a touch late. If anything else, this game is... it. it I feel like this game is for all those geometry nerds. <laughs> right. The throngs uh, and throngs of geometry nerds. Yes. Uh, it, or at the very least, if you get good this game, you get good with geometry. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, like pull. It, it is, th there's a lot of geometry involved in it and the ability to like perceive space mm -hmm. and measure distance with your eyes plays a lot into it as well. Maybe not with ac the actual paperwork size, but it gives you a lot better skill in eyeballing stuff. So an interesting double team here, but it is ended by Zinc taking possession back. And unfortunately, Enrico is able to get the ball where he wants it to be, make sure that it doesn't go towards his goal. And now there's a lot of open field between them and the goal. Ooh. And Flaren able to capitalize on that, just sinks it right in. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, there was a, some kind of miscommunication there because the last man back was well over half court so i think he mm. may have thought he was playing second man back as opposed to last man back and then there was just nobody to defend the goal it uh it also seems like uh missouri doing a really good job of kind of starving our team for some boost uh as i'm noticing that in in particular uh, yeah, several demos yeah, right there, you guys, can tell. Their guys seem to be very, very proficient at ensuring that they always have some amount of uh, boost going. Yeah, and you see a miss right here from, uh, yeah, it is Super Dish. So Hot Dog, Hot Dog really didn't even make that shot per se. Uh, the shot was kind of already going in and Hot Dog just kind of tipped it on its way in. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Super Dish trying there to make a defensive play. And it's funny because we were talking about how they were beating us out on the ground in the last match. This one, it seems like they're beating us out in the air. Yeah, they're, they've changed up their game plan, which, uh, you know, not a bad idea. It really makes it significantly harder for our team to adjust properly. Yeah, there's really two different kinds of philosophies. Oh, and Enrico able to make a, make a play here. So you see Enrico... He pops it over, and then it pops out. And then, uh, was that an own goal? Uh, I couldn't quite tell who hit it last. I think it may have been an own goal. Like, I couldn't see. I'd have to look at the replay. Yeah. But I believe it may have accidentally been an own goal. Let's see. I hope that's not the case. <laughs> yeah. Zincardo trying to get control of the ball. Just bring it over to the blue side. 
Yeah, and the reason I say that is it would have given somebody other than Enrico credit for the goal if mm. one of his teammates had touched it afterward, but they didn't. So I'm thinking yeah. that's probably what happened. Uh, but yeah, Enrico now, and it's interesting, not only have they changed up their game strategy, but they also, you'll notice that Enrico, who was very quiet in the first round, has all of a sudden has become their primary scorer. Mm -hmm. So they, they're kind of changing up the roles in the team as well. And that can be very confusing for a team because then they don't know who to cover or when they do have to cover them, they're used, like they're in their head defending, like they're defending the other guy. And so that can be devastating to the defense of an opposing team. Just uh, Oh, and Zink with the nice save there. Which, I mean, all things said, really good showing from the Missouri team in that pretty much all of their players are very equally, seem to be very equally uh, uh, skilled. Yeah, I actually thought this was a fairly unbalanced team until I saw this round where en Enrico is doing an awful lot of passing and shooting on goal, that kind of thing, and getting quite a number of uh, demos as well. So I think it is more balanced than I initially thought. I will say demo is still my favorite part of this whole game. That's not surprising. <laughs> it's like the one thing I'm good at. Smash player just wants to play, <laughs> play for demos. <laughs> All right, Hot Dog going for a shot on goal, stopped by Dish. Nice save by him. But yeah, that ball seems to have been in front of Faulkner's goal an awful lot this game. Oh, and Zinkaru able to take that ball away. Good steal. It does feel like we've stabilized a little bit this round. If we can just get a score Oh, in. wait. No. Not quite. Man. Hot dog of doom right there and ready for the save. Good. And that's why you wait on back post. Oh, shot on goal here if Zinkaru can put it in. I was... Never mind. I apparently have a terrible sense of geometry. <laughs> uh, never mind. That was not on sh uh, shot on goal. So Corn Pop able to actually get a demo there. No, Zinc got the demo. Sorry. Uh, Corn Pop able to keep possession and keep the ball on their side of the field. It's probably too late at this point, but good on him for trying to figure out what's going to work in the future. Mm -hmm. We still got at least another round after this, and if possible, and hopefully three more. That's the hope. <laughs> oh, but unfortunately, Faulkner does fall to Missouri Science and Technology on that one by a score of 5 nothing. So that brings our current total score up to Missouri uh, Science and Technology 2, Faulkner 0, which means that Faulkner cannot lose any more rounds. If mm -hmm. they do, that is it for them for this game. So hopefully that is the last one that we lose. But very difficult to fight this team. We've seen them struggle a lot with them. And I think it's because they're so adaptable. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think that it's necessarily that their entire team is just that much higher skilled than us. I mean, they may be. I haven't seen their ranks. But it seems as though, just based on my observation of these past two rounds, what's beating Faulkner out is that they're constantly switching their game plan. And that's causing some confusion in the mm -hmm. Faulkner ranks. Which, uh, looking here at the start of this next game, uh, once again, being on the aggressive side and keeping on the ball in, uh, in our field, although really good, a uh, little bit of keep away there from the Faulkner team, uh, just kind of nah, didn't really steal the ball, but kept it from going where they were wanting it to. It looked like we were starting to stabilize there uh, at the end as we kept them from scoring a goal from about a minute and a half. Uh... Yeah, definitely you can see that they're starting to at least pick up on how to play these guys. But unfortunately in these situations, especially when you're playing from behind, that can happen too late. But look at them. They've gone a full four minutes without a goal. And they've actually kept the ball on the green side of the field for most of the game so far. Faulkner definitely adapting slowly but surely. What we got to hope is just that it's not a little bit too There you go. Super Dish pushing that ball out. With an epic save. Super Dish again going for the goal. Zinkaru. Corn Pop is able to pop it back up. Let's see if Zink can do anything with it. And Super Dish actually is the one who steals position here, uh, possession here. Hot Dog, though, able to push it away from the goal. And now it's heading back towards Faulkner's side. Corn Pop is able to push it back to midcourt. 
seeing Cable to kind of position. Uh oh. Oh. Yeah, I was about to say that's trouble. And it wasn't a super quick roll, but it was a, a faster roll, I guess. Mm -hmm. So Enrico able to do that, and then Super Dish just not near enough to the goal to be able to stop it. Yeah, if I had to use one one way to sum up their strategy so far, and this is unusual for a Rocket League team, it seems that their entire game plan is deception. <laughs> like, they're constantly using sleight of hand to distract players so that they're not in their right positions, the rotations are off, and because of that, they're, they've been really good at switching up their game plan so that Faulkner is confused during the gameplay. Uh, it's just, it's a really good strategy, and it's one that I don't think I've ever seen. Like, we've played more skilled teams than this, obviously, but I don't think we've seen one that played off the deception angle as well as they have I and mean, learned scores again. I will say this team has done a really good job of just keeping a lot of our players uh, kind of tied up, just out of position. There right. were a lot of demos, uh, a lot of just uh, car crashing to kind of keep themselves in as position as, as best a position as they can. Uh, while also disrupting ours as much as possible. Yeah, Corn Pop able to... Ooh. Almost spoke too soon. <laughs> it looked like a good save at first. Super Dish just being slightly farther away from that ball than we initially thought he was. Uh, first touch here from Enrico. Flurin trying to make a play off the top. Luckily, Faulkner able to deny it. No one's there to really defend. But unfortunately, there was no one in there to put it in the goal either. Yeah, now you have two people on the goal and Enrico trying to make a play here. Oh, Florin makes Zink. the shot, but Zink with the save. Woo. Corn Pop with the demo, but Flurin just being able to deal with so many shots on goal there. But yeah, so what happened person. is Corn Pop is able to stop that, but with both him and Super Dish out of the way, Florin's just there, and the ball is there, and it just lines up Florin perfectly. kind of playing it smart there for a second and just kind of pulled back on the gas a little bit, just long enough for the ball to get in position, then went for it. Yeah, I got to be honest, though. While credit to Florin, he's obviously a skilled player, I don't think he anticipated the ball to just land directly in front of him <laughs> between him and the goal. I don't hey. even think he was planning that. One one of the best traits when you're playing a game like this is just being able to react what you got. Oh, absolutely. No question about that. I don't think he even knew that ball was coming, but it was there. He's like, uh, okay, well, I'll take it then. <laughs> Free goal. <laughs> Essentially. All right, Super Dish trying to push this ball in front of the goal to give one of his teammates a chance to seal the deal. Unfortunately, with a minute 20 left... Not much they can do. Oh, well, hold hey, on. Hey, Corn Pop, there you go. Corn Pop with a really solid shot on goal, but they just uh, they just happen to have someone who rotated back just in time. Yep. And there's the one-minute warning. Super Dish with a little wall-crawling defense here. Oh, wow. Ooh. Zero to five one minutes. We've been in this position before. This has can been this. We, every game score so far has been zero to five. Can we uh, change how this looks before the end? Yeah, I will say that was one thing that was really smart by Enrico. He was still able to get the ball to go in, but able to change the trajectory so it was harder to defend against. So smart play by him. I will say Florence car throws me off there. Oh, and quickly <laughs> yeah, zero looks, to six because it looks like it, it looks should like be on Faulkner's car. team. Yeah. Yeah, Corn Pop unfortunately not able to defend that. I'm not sure if it was too early or too late. I'd have to look at the replay again, but mm. wasn't able to line his car up correctly. Florence car looks a lot like uh, Super Dishes. It does.
Enrico kicks it back. Enrico able to kick ball out, but it doesn't go anywhere near the goal, really. And we're down to 10 seconds. Hot, Hot dog. Of Doom just trying to either get this. <laughs> wow. Score. Good setup. Yeah, so what's happening here, you may be wondering why they're able to run the score up. You'll notice there's no one even near the goal because we've gotten to the point in the game where hyper aggression is the only hope. Yeah. And so because of that, they've kind of thrown defense. It's kind of like when you throw a Hail Mary, like you've mm -hmm. just completely jettisoned defense because your only chance is to be hyper aggressive. But it looks like that's going to be the end of the game. So with a final score of three zip, unfortunately, Faulkner not able to take down the Miners this mm -hmm. evening. And uh, it was quite a game. Like I said, a lot of uh, unfortunate mistakes happening, but primarily just credit to the Miners who yeah. did a really good job of keeping Faulkner off their game. Uh, so, uh, you know, hate to see that obviously wanted a different outcome but we'll be back here uh, in a couple weeks the guys have a bye week next week mm -hmm. to kind of look at this game footage and like honestly as much as i hate the results of this game it's really good to have this game specifically as the one before a bye week because mm -hmm. not only do you have time to shake the loss off but you also have time, a lot more time to look at the game footage, review it, see what you did right, what you did wrong, where the adjustments can be made, that kind of thing. And so mm -hmm. I actually really like the fact that our bye week is happening next week because I feel like that's going to make us a better team having this to focus on. Yeah, uh, a lot that we can definitely learn from that. A lot of really strong fundamentals coming from the other team and a lot we can, a lot we can learn from this match. So I definitely look forward to seeing how Faulkner adjusts from here. Uh, what what they can do to really be able to grow from this experience for sure for sure so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and get an interview in the post game show and that will be coming up in just a second when we come back preparing leaders for the river region and beyond faulkner university's harris college of business is distinctively different focusing on ethics and character development in the classroom and building ethical foundations with our new ethics institute living the mission of Faulkner University to glorify God through education of the whole person, emphasizing integrity of character in a caring Christian environment where every individual matters every day. As a student at the Harris College of Business, I saw firsthand the mission of Faulkner University. My professors there not only taught me, but they also mentored me, they encouraged me, they cared for me, they instilled character and integrity into me. I mattered every day. That mission hasn't changed. Harris College of Business continues to provide its students with the tools they need to succeed in today's business world. Did you know that 100% of Faulkner's computer science graduates since 2014 have found jobs in their fields within six months of graduating? We live in the information age where you either use a computer or you get left behind. Are you ready for your future? Faulkner's computer science program is your gateway to a leading edge career with purpose. I will church websites and through the training and instruction that I received from Faulkner, I was able to go right into my career after graduation. It laid a solid foundation for what you need to know. At Faulkner, there are many kind and knowledgeable people that are eager to help you prepare for the future. In the U.S., there are predicted to be over 400,000 job openings each year for computer specialists with median wages well above average. What you learn at Faulkner will give you control of what your future looks like. Our faculty has an average of 16 years of industrial experience and is ready to navigate you to a bright future as a computer scientist. Come join us at Faulkner University. Your future is worth it. back folks thank you so much for being with us here on the faulkner esports post game show just coming off of this loss from the faulkner rocket league team with a score of 3-0 against the miners so south carolina or south carolina that's the game tomorrow uh missouri science and technology so uh we're here with the captain of the rocket league team super dish brandon yeah, dishman and dish uh needed to ask you about this it seemed like and I, I said this in the 
in the course of the game. If I could describe the strategy from the miners tonight, it was deception. Oh yeah. It seemed like they were constantly like changing up their game plan, changing up who they were using in different positions, the way that they were positioning themselves. And so it seemed like the problem, and I want you to speak to this, was that you guys never really had a chance to counter because every time you were getting ready to counter, they would come up with something completely different. Is that what was happening? Uh, yeah, um, it, it's part of their rotation. Um, mm -hmm. it's a, it, There's a lot of uh, chemistry that they have between each other. You can just tell by the way they play. Right. And uh, personally being in it, um, it seemed like uh, a lot of what we were doing um, wasn't working. And uh, with that, being in uh with that entailed uh that made it rough on us um a lot of it was rough and up close every now and then and then sometimes they would spread it out and their rotation would be a little bit mysterious um especially with the bumps i'm just not used to that at, anymore um even though it's a strategy in the game i'm not used to it as much right um well, most of the collegiate teams we've played don't don't play that particular way. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, if that's their way to win, that's 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 how you get a win. Um, with that in mind, I felt a lot slower tonight. I think getting that forfeit win from last week probably right made us nice and cold, ready not ready for this match. Um, having a little bit of problems with uh, doing some practices. Well, I mean, with that in mind, that just makes things a little rough. Um, mm -hmm. every, everybody gets busy in their life. But uh, right. with that in mind, there's probably going to have to be some different way of practicing because uh, this this isn't going to work. So do you think that the bye week next week is going to help with that? Like you guys will have some, some time to take a look back, reflect on this, and be able to come back stronger? Do you think that that's going to be something that helps or do you think it actually would be better to have another game next week so you don't you have that problem you were talking about a second ago about getting cold honestly if we have a bye week then that means that we'll be able to review and uh, be able to look over this mm -hmm. and uh, be able to see where we went wrong and uh, how we can get better as a player and not as just a player but as a team because uh a lot of uh uh, especially being a little shorthanded on some players, what we used to have uh, right. seems to hindered us a little bit, um, especially with our rankings. Mm -hmm. um, I know that uh, I, I, I mean, I did like Cole's performance. He, I mean, I see that he's trying his best with mouse and keyboard. We're gonna duct tape a controller to his hand soon. <laughs> see if that works. And uh, yeah, see see how that goes. Um, maybe eventually he'll spend a whole summer with a duct tape to his hands and uh. Before you know it he'll be a full controller player and uh zinc he plays his heart out i'll, I'll give he it he does to every time because He's a passionate guy uh even though i'm a captain uh sometimes i don't i i, I feel like i learn, I learn a lot from him mm. he's a he honestly is a great player and uh, i feel like i learn something new every time i play with him every time i cue a match and uh i give a lot of thanks to him yeah, well, it's uh, good to hear you praise your teammates like that, and I know that y'all didn't have the outcome that you wanted tonight. Uh, one thing that I also noticed, too, it seemed like at the end of the game, uh, you know, you would think that what was happening is the other team was just running up the score, but it was because, at least based on my perception, I wanted to see if, if I was right on this. You guys, at, near the end of the last match, had just adopted a sort of hyper-aggressive mm -hmm. strategy because you knew that, like, okay, we're in a five-goal deficit. We've got to be cooking right now, so you kind of abandoned defense just to go full offense. Was that correct? Uh, yeah, well, we, we ended up being on t defense for too long. Um, we had to find a way to get out. We had to be a little bit more aggressive to be able to actually match their energy energy mm -hmm. and uh that only lasted for so long you can only imitate for so long and uh we're gonna have to build our own way of offense and uh having to make that work well i know that you're definitely going to do everything you can to make sure that they're able to pull that off and hopefully we can come back a lot stronger with a new strategy a new game plan and with a little bit more practice 
But credit to the Miners. They're yep. a great team. You could tell that they're talented. And one thing that was very different than them, they didn't go for a lot of big, fancy aerials like a lot of the teams we've played. They just kind of played regular, I don't want to say boring, but like just fundamental bread and butter Rocket League. And yeah. it showed that that can be an effective game strategy. I mean, yeah. I mean, that's what uh, that's what they did. Um a little bit of a little bit of techniques here and there that uh that I'm not used to, but um I mean with a school a university with, that has science and technology in their name yeah that's, normally that's, that means they have a good esports that's, team that's practically a given right there yeah I mean that's practically saying once I'm get done with my science and technology homework you know where I'm going after yeah when you're, you're talking about other sports like you know your football or you know science and tech school probably not going to be where you're going yeah. to have your better athletes but in esports it's the opposite those are the ones you have to look out for in esports if you're looking at like a technical school or something like that uh but yeah so thank you so much for your time brandon Absolutely. appreciate uh giving us a little bit of insight into what was going on mm -hmm. behind the scenes and we're going to go ahead and wrap it up this evening so before we do wanted to make mention one more time about our broadcast schedule Coming up, so Overwatch Two is tomorrow. That's February the thirteenth, and at a bit, bit of an unusual time, it'll be eight thirty against the University of South Carolina. So it's going to be us versus the SEC tomorrow night against the Gamecocks. Oh boy, we love our late games. Yeah, no, I actually, honestly, if I had my way about it, I would have all our games start at nine, man, and then we could do practice from like six to nine every night, and that then just have a game. Great. At nine. See, wouldn't you that be better? The ultimate warm up. I know, right? Yeah, but anyway. But they don't ask me. They don't ask my opinion on those things. Of course. So, uh, <laughs> no. Uh, so tomorrow night, eight thirty, a late game. It's going to be uh, Faulkner Esports after dark, um, and that's going to be us versus South Carolina. And then our next Rocket League game, like I mentioned, we have a bye next week. Yep. So no game on President's Day. Mm. Uh, we'll be celebrating a uh, bunch of old dead presidents. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no Rocket League for them. Nope. Nope. My favorite, uh, George Washington. George Washington would have been a Rocket League fan. I feel you know like what? That. maybe he would have Washington and Lincoln playing Rocket League with each. I could see that. <laughs> that should be a YouTube video we do at some uh, point. Yeah. Uh, and then we, we do have Rocket League coming back, not this coming Monday, but the next Monday, um, it says October 26th. That's wildly wrong. It's February 26th. <laughs> I don't know why. I guess I had that holdover from last semester. Uh, and that's going to be against Kirkwood University. So we're going to be playing another set of Eagles next oh week. So it'll be Faulkner versus Kirkwood. Special thanks to everybody that was helping out here for our head producer, Liz Anderson, who's doing a great job keeping us on the air and uh, who was having some medical issues, which is the reason we haven't seen her in a little bit. But hopefully her uh, poor little foot will be better in no time flat. <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, our assistant producers who were helping out and observing tonight, that would be Connor Hagen and Josh Chouchy, who is going to be with me tomorrow night for Overwatch. And, uh, of course, my broadcast uh, partner who has already left the building because he had some homework to get done. But that was Seth Dawson, who's doing a great job on color commentary tonight. I, of course, as always, am Caleb Cockwit. And that's going to be it until we have our next broadcast tomorrow. Remember, at 830 for another Overwatch 2 match. Until that happens, stay the course, friends. The preceding broadcast was an official presentation of Faulkner University. It may not be redistributed without the express written consent of the Faulkner University Athletic Department. Regitar USA High Res Arena is sponsored by Regitar USA. The national anthem was performed by the Faulkner University Chorus. If you would like to learn more about the Faulkner Esports program, visit our official website at FaulknerEagles.com or follow us on Discord, Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, and Instagram for all the latest news and events. Thank you for watching and soar Eagles.